stay up LA. Um, so if you can just join me, you can just uh, join me in welcoming Jim up to the oh, <laughs> Yay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming. What I wanted to do uh, was have a moment to introduce each of the artists. If you can say a little bit about yourself and uh, mention how you're connected to the book. And uh, Book Soup has been kind enough to let us use the back room for uh, signing. So uh, without further ado, I'm excited, first of all, to introduce uh, our esteemed photographer, uh, Lord Jim, oh, no, Stefan Flew. Uh, but if you what don't mind apologies. saying a few words about yourself and how you're connected with the book, that'd be great. Um, just keep an eye on things. <laughs> <laughs> for a little while. It turns out it accumulates. And before you know it, you have a big old treasure trove of shots of things that don't exist anymore. Um, we connected through your investigation, essentially. You found the photos, we talked about them, we talked more, and then some more. And, uh, hey, that's, that's, that's the gist of it. Yeah. I think with all this, it's just fun to make many friends along the way. And Stefan's become a very close friend through this process, so I'm thankful for that. Sitting next to Stefan is uh, Benjamin Alejandro, who, um, would you mind saying a few words about yourself? No, not at all. Hey, guys. Um, Benjamin, uh, Alejandro, and uh, thanks so much for having us, Book Soup and Jim. Um, I don't know, I guess I just started a couple years ago. I just went out and put some posters out on the street, and uh, one thing led to another. And uh, now we got some Im images on a book. I'm being asked to sign a book at a book signing on Sunset, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I had to show up to believe myself. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty radical. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, well, thank you. And then, of course, uh, uh, Smear, who is here, who actually wrote the foreword for the book, which I'm thankful for. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Um, well, you know. You just basically said everything I want to say. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I wrote the foreword for the book. And, uh, just got here, and um, hopefully it'll be a good evening, you know? <clears throat> Thanks. Man, a few words. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, in the back, Scepterhead. Hi, How's it going? Um, I'm just a creative person, and uh, I'm honored to be a part of uh, anything that um, showcases new being created. Uh, recently, I've, I've started spray painting, and I don't think I'll ever stop. And um, that's where I'm at right now in my career. Um, but it's exciting just to make friends, like you said, and see other people be created and be recognized for doing something that no longer exists. Yeah. Most of yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Behind Sep is Thiefel. Uh, do you mind saying? Uh, yeah, DHTFL, Diani, nice to meet you guys. Um, yeah, just grateful to be part of this book as well. It was a, uh, kind of a surprise to me, and uh, I'm a kind of a lone wolf. Like operating alone and painting outside in big places, and uh, yeah, so much to success to Jim. It's uh, you know really, really cool to see you know again the relationships that are formed too because there's a lot of you know, sometimes people like me who just operate alone and you don't really get to interact with a lot of your contemporaries a lot. So it's a it's a really cool bonding experience and also just an education for you know anyone who wants to be educated on. This movement's about and has been it's been going on for quite some time, not just in LA but worldwide. So. Yeah. Well stated, thank you. And behind people we have Snyder all the way from Carlsbad. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, Jim, thanks for for doing this. This is the, the second book signing I've been to with you. And uh, I love the environment that you create. It's uh, you know, we're used to being out on the streets and the in the alleys. But it's nice to be in this academic environment, books everywhere, and people are really interested in the, in the movement. As Gianna was saying, it, it truly is the current art movement, and I think we're all really lucky to, to be part of it. Um, and uh, the book is amazing, the photos, uh, everything about it, I, I really enjoy it. I think along with sharing the passion for creating, we all kind of have that similar passion for leaving a footprint behind. You know, there's that sense of legacy. And uh, what you're doing is you're helping us not only share our story, but you know, print it in, in history, in this art movement. So it's, it's a really great thing for, uh, for what you're doing. Oh, thanks. 
Well, I, I have to, if I can take this moment, and I didn't plan to do this, but uh, to thank the many artists you who are in the room who participated with me in this journey who've taught me a lot about this subculture and this genre of art making it's something that uh, is certainly outside my realm of study and um, and was the reason i was so interested in it. there was such an incredible enthusiasm and the sense of community and um, this way of bypassing the traditional art world which i thought was fantastic so mm -hmm. If there's, there's so many positive characteristics to it that I admire as someone from within the institution. I'm thankful to all of you for that. So I think Book Soup will allow us to go in the back and sign. They're pushing us in the back. But uh, thank you all for showing up, and uh, we look forward to signing some books. So yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank so. you all. Um, if you haven't gotten a copy of the book yet, we have them at the front. Um, but yeah, we'll be in the back signing. So you can join us back there. I, cool. I have a question. Oh, yeah. It says on the book it has all the artists, and when, like, say you're walking down the street and you take a photograph, how do you, how do you know the artists? That's part of it. You connect the dots, and, and, and you're intrigued by more, some more than others, and you make an effort to figure it out. It's kind of so you have to do that. And if you're really lucky, you bump into them, and if you're really, really lucky, you bump into them, and, and, and you get to have a beer with them. And no, pick their <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, so, I mean, I mean, it's a little bit too much. So the process was that you put the book together, he did the photographs? Yeah. The photos already existed. Oh, you did, you had been doing for them. Yeah, but he's been taking photos for many years, so over a decade, I would, I no, would say. No, another decade. Not but quite. But, but in a concerted effort, it's, it's really simple. As of 05, when Flickr came along, mm. when, when sort of like it allowed right. us to post, yeah. tag and proliferate the, 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 the photos and that's part and parcel of it. But a so lot of that's it's for the first time you sort of were able to exchange and even ask like who's this and again connecting the dots also became significantly easier. You would be able to put them in sets, you would be able to create subcategories and so on. So it also conditioned you to have a closer eye or to categorize and paste graffiti and so on and so on. So it, it, it in itself it just evolved, uh, or it was very conducive to uh, Since 2005? Uh, no, uh, Flickr came um, yes, yes. 05, 2005. <coughs> so I've been taking photos previous to that, but most of them are, uh, like everybody else, they're on film, they're somewhere, you somewhere. know, you have a print or another, but uh, they never get, you never get passed around, you know, you don't really talk about them. And Flickr sort of created this platform where all of a sudden we were able to exchange, find common denominators, find common likings and so on. But now a lot of that artwork is, is painted over now, right? The early stuff that you photographed is, is gone. That's yeah, it gets covered. So, yeah, that's, so that's part it of it. It has like a show, like a life, uh, yeah. a temporary street life, right? And, and it, it has a lot to do with it. A lot of the photos I took in this year, so I took only because I recognized that, well, mm -hmm. this is going to be gone tomorrow, so you better get to it. Yeah. I um, thought about that a lot. So, yeah. That's great. How did you get into it? How did I get into it? Uh, I, uh, it was something that I, I, I talk about it actually, I write about it in the book, but it's something that I've noticed an interest in my own students, uh, taking an interest in graffiti and street art. Uh, my own introduction was through art history. You know, when you study graffiti or street art as an art historian, you look at Keith Haring, Jean-Michel Basquiat, and then that's it. It yeah. traditionally ends. Uh, and so the things that have happened in the last few decades aren't part of the canon of art history. So the resurgence and the incredible interest that's happening now uh, and the enthusiasm is was contagious and I wanted to learn about it. And someone who knew very, very little, I went straight to each artist. So everybody in this room was interviewed. And I used something called a snowball interview technique, where I started with one artist. I interviewed, then I had a series of 12 questions uh, with follow-up questions. And from there, I would ask, do you have a friend that I can interview, or two or three people that I can interview? And then eventually it turns into 70, 75 interviews at this point. And you end up getting a, an incredibly deep understanding of the subject matter while not being part of the culture, which is really kind of fun as a scholar. To do so, I really enjoyed that. 
Did you film those interviews? No, but some of them are recorded online. You can listen to about 20, 25 of them, and almost everybody in this room has been on recorded, and you can listen to it online. Cool. Yeah, it's called the Stay Up Podcast, and it's been, yeah, so you can just uh, download it on your computer or your, your phone. I met a guy a few years ago, I, th I think he died, but he had photos, he had put together a photo collection of of graffiti art going back into the 40s and 30s in LA. Yeah. Wow. And I don't know what happened to his collection when he died, but it was, I, I saw it, it was fantastic. A lot of it, you know, small, like maybe two by three, you know, those small size photos. But sure, sure. Does that, do you know, are there any archives where any of that exists? Um, Plenty, actually. Yeah. Are there? So there are some, some really committed photographers that are doing it way before us or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's your duty then to sort out who it was and uh, see what happened to it. Yeah, I know. I know where his son is. I can. I can ask him. Yeah, we can try to ask him because that that would be that's that's in the forties and thirties that would be highly yeah. unusual and those would oh, be yeah. like coveted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in the thirties that the LA River was paved over, and those are some of the earliest tags, and that would actually place our history ahead of New York City and Philadelphia. So those types of photographs are really important. Yeah, he had a lot of stuff from East L.A. Uh, mm -hmm. going back into the 40s, yeah. 50s. I mean, I think you guys are much more artistic than a lot of the early. <laughs> These My guys man. are artistic, yeah. I mean, sure. yeah. early stuff tend to be more just words, not as decorated and beautiful stuff that you see today. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, but it's still the mother of the genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not knocking it. It's just also tell, yeah, but it reflects like what the was happening in its time. You know, what, you know what I mean on the street then, like the man. Like, yeah. In the 40s. Yeah, I think yeah. things were a little more grim back then. It wasn't appreciated at all in certain fact, you know, oh, yeah. areas. <laughs> well, there are some nice histories of Chicano graffiti in Los Angeles, and they talk about that and the way writing was used to protect neighborhoods and who lived in what neighborhood. So I mean, mm -hmm. that is the origins right there. Yeah. And so that's what I'm talking about in the 1940s. Besides it being a growing interest, was there a particular moment or event that made you feel like, I have to write about this, or was it just a continued desire to learn? For me, I, well, I moved here from New York City, uh, and I've lived on the East Coast and in the Midwest most of my life, and when I moved here, I didn't feel like I belonged, <laughs> and, I, and, and part of me still doesn't feel like I belong here, uh, and it was through this actually through this study that I really started to love uh, the ins and outs and the nooks and crannies of the city so it was a slow process I don't think sort of those eureka moments happen at once but uh, over time and, and you feel like uh, you know you just uh, as a critic you get to know one gallery at a time it's the same thing with each of the artists and uh, yeah you're sort of uh, your appreciation grows certainly yeah and have you gone out to pick up a can and get the mindset? No, no, I'm, I, I haven't. And, really? <laughs> uh, I'm actually, you know, I, I actually, I like that I'm not part of it in a way. I don't, I don't feel like I have confused my identity in any sort of way. I'm a professor and a teacher, <laughs> and I love doing that, and I'm always going to do that. I've known I've wanted to do that since I was in college, so. Uh, I, and I work with all different types of artists, so, and as a critic and historian, I get to work with a lot of different types of artists, so. <laughs> Uh, I admire what folks do, but I never really want to copy it or do that sort of thing. So that's never been a temptation of mine. I don't have a sticker to give out. <laughs> a business card. <laughs>